Welcome back to the Motherhood Collective Co. <laughs> hey, guys. Uh, we just recorded last week's episode last night, <laughs> if that makes sense to you. <laughs> yeah, if that makes any sense to you. We're recording three nights in a row. We are. Because we love to record. We do actually love to record, but Jesse's going out of town and yeah. it would make my life easier if we were just always one ahead. We sh- Yeah, we should have some in stock mm-hmm. and we don't have to ghost you guys for a week if we get sick. Yeah. So, I think I think there's going to be a big snowstorm tonight. I don't want there to be. I saw, like, as I was driving over here, you know, when you see visibly, like, wind and snow kind of mm-hmm. brushing along the pavement in mm-hmm. front of your car. I'm like, there's Dang something it. coming. I feel like this happens at the beginning of every year, that it's nice in the week, mm-hmm. crap weekends. Like, I know. Who is programming our weather? To be like <laughs> I have some suspicions, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. It is, it's bizarre. It it's is. Very it's bizarre. very, yeah, I know. But also it's kind of like a nice excuse to just snuggle in. But then it's like mm-hmm. we're not going to snuggle in because like we have plans. But I yeah. don't know. In Ooh. theory. Yeah. I'm sorry. I am not sleeping well, you guys. I'm not sleeping well at all. Yeah. It's not been fun. I think Lily woke up 10 times last night. Not even joking. Maybe 12. Oh, no. I don't even know what was going on. I think she had like a head cold earlier this week. And at nighttime, she still has a stuffy nose. You know, like, and babies, that just lingers. Yeah. Like that nose thing. So, so she's having a hard time breathing. I don't know because I don't hear it. Yeah. She's just waking up and wanting to eat all night long. So I'm sorry. that was the longest night of my life. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> For lunch, Brady, or, uh, well, Brady went to the gym, um, and I I go, hey, Noah. He goes, what, Mom? I said, let's go to Panera, because Noah and I love Panera. And he they're, said, they're so funny. They literally love, I've never met someone who loves Panera so <laughs> well, much. Well, I'm from St. Louis. St. Louis is yeah. where Panera was founded, and it's called St. Louis Bread Company mm-hmm. there. And then Panera, the company, bought out St. Louis Bread Company. So everywhere else in the world... Besides St. Louis, it's Panera, but at home it's St. Louis Bread Co. And they're very popular. They're everywhere. Yeah. And um, I don't know. It just, I don't know. It's comfort food. So I ordered it ahead and then we drove there and Noah had, we, he was listening to an audio book. Mm-hmm. I was listening to an audio book. Mm-hmm. Lily was napping and I literally just sat in the Panera parking lot for an hour and ate mm-hmm. my food and didn't did nothing mm-hmm. i ordered one they have energy drinks there they're like yeah. clean i'd say that in quotation marks but they're like clean energy drinks they've got like 150 milligrams of caffeine in it <laughs> wait for for some reason i feel like someone died recently from that mm, i don't know i could have sworn i read an article about somebody dying from an energy drink from panera there was probably something else going well, on well there's a there a, they did have to take them this is like so unrelated i'm sorry but they did <laughs> they used to keep them out by the fountain drinks and like in parentheses, it said one cup, like a regular size cup is like 200 milligrams of caffeine. And I bet yeah, people were lot. going and refilling because that's a ton yeah. of caffeine. Yeah. I I honestly, quote me on this. I'm pretty sure someone died, but. Yeah. Don't drink a lot. I cap my caffeine intake at 100 milligrams a day, which is like low. Brady yeah. caps his at like 400. <laughs> well, I think a cup of coffee is like 50, right? Um, It's like 80, 80, 80 to 100, depending on how strong yeah. you make it. So, so I so. probably, I probably drink because I, speaking of like drives, that's pretty much my every afternoon yeah. between like one and three. I put the kids in the car. Sunny gets to listen to one audiobook, and then I listen to my audiobook, and I bring a coffee to go. And a lot of times like we have some kind of errand to run or we don't. This and is why you have so many marketplace finds. Yes. Because you, <laughs> you're driving. Yeah, Chase was like, what do you guys like? Where do you go? And I'm like, well, we drop things at Goodwill. Like I usually find something on Facebook marketplace or we just, you know, drive yeah. or we go visit our house. It's my favorite part of my day because I feel like my kids, they were fed lunch. They've been loved all morning. They're just in the back seat napping and I get to just listen to my audiobook and drink my coffee. And like, it's so nice. I just can't stop driving or Ledger will cry. (laughs) (laughs) He needs the car to keep moving. But, um, anyways, I'm sorry. You're not sleeping. That's, I feel like when you, I was just voice memoing this to a friend the other day. I feel like when you're not sleeping, your capacity is like cut into a third. It is. I and like things is. that are like typically not hard become super uh-huh. difficult. And especially yeah. when that's chronic and you're not sleeping for a long period of time, you're like, mm-hmm. I don't have the capacity to operate outside of yeah. like basic needs. A lot Usually of times. I can handle like, it's like normally she's like two or three times a night, which is more than Noah. I was just messaging somebody about that earlier. Like Noah just slept like through the whole mm-hmm. night. Like, and he's still, I don't know. He's such a great sleeper. Not that Lily's not a great sleeper. She's just 
wants to be by me and she wakes me up at night and I'm okay with like a couple but whew, this week all week long it's been a lot yeah. so sorry if you're going through that <laughs> which a lot of you probably are yeah a lot of people I like that reel you shared earlier I know I know it's like I felt sometimes <laughs> like when my sister lived in our basement mm-hmm. when we first had babies um her son was he had some really really hard time sleeping and he would cry literally all night long for like at at least the six months that they were Mm -hmm. in our basement and I remember and I wrote this poem about this that I sent her um earlier this week that I found but I remember feeling so much like I felt awful for her but I remember feeling this weird like solace when I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I would hear Brave crying in the basement because it made me it just reminded me like I'm not alone I'm not the only mom awake right now you know and I think that sometimes we we don't know that because there's not a baby crying in our basement, but yeah. maybe next door or maybe 10 in your neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And I don't know when you start thinking that way, you're like, I know I'm not the only mom awake right now. And it just, no, it's it makes normal. you feel a little bit less lonely, you know, yeah. especially when you're an intuitive mother, you're letting your baby wake up at yeah. night, right? You're not mm-hmm. trying to train it out of them. Yeah. Um, for most of us, I mean, some of us have jobs yeah. that, yeah, that is not possible, but for, right. I think the majority of our audience, yeah, we're letting our babies wake up at night. Mm-hmm. And I think that there are, multiple thousands of you here and Mm -hmm. (laughs) you're definitely not alone yeah so anyways if i can't form fully functional sentences that's why Mm -hmm. (laughs) been zoning out all day that should be the standard for us though just as like Mm -hmm. as moms with like new ish babies Mm -hmm. the standard should be that we're not gonna always know what we're saying yeah yeah and you know you see like those like honestly give us if we haven't said this before give us grace yeah. because we're postpartum i just feel like sometimes like this is a raw conversation this is not like edited so mm-hmm. we're two human beings that are saying things that are probably not always like with all of the love in the world like for me sometimes i'm like why why did i sound so sassy when i was <laughs> saying that like when i get passionate i get so sassy you know yeah. and well and you said it before i think we're each other's safe spaces so yeah. it, we forget maybe that there's multiple thousands of people yes <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just talking. tens of thousands uh, of people that we have never probably met. But yeah. um, do you know the my favorite messages that we get and favorite reviews, which if you haven't left us a review, please do that. Yeah, because um, we love to hear your guys' feedback and like we know read what you them think. last night and we're like, oh, my God. But my favorite like messages on Instagram are the ones that are like, I feel like you guys are my best friends and we're just chatting in the car. Mm-hmm. That's what we want. That is literally why we're here. Yeah. So. We don't want this to be like ultra filtered where we're like, Oh, maybe we shouldn't have said that. We shouldn't do this. We yeah. shouldn't like just take us as the full human beings that we are. Yeah. <laughs> Flawed postpartum exhausted. Yeah. And real. Yes. That should be our tagline. <laughs> <laughs> But here we are, and we're a week from Valentine's Day, and every year, every year, (laughs) the past year, we spoke about marriage around Valentine's Day, because why not? And our event last year around Valentine's Day was also about marriage, generally. I should totally release this episode this week, and do, yeah, the Mm Q&A, because we record that one first, but I'll release that the next week. That way, this is for Valentine's Day. If you have never listened to our, what was that called last year? Some kind of sex talk? sex ed for an intimate and fulfilled marriage or something like that yeah you got to go listen to that amanda just like knocked it out of the park with all of the intricacies of intimacy yeah let me introduce you to your vagina yeah (laughs) (laughs) and what was so funny and i was just like i was sitting there and i think i was like literally two weeks pregnant or something (laughs) like i like just just must have become pregnant and i'm just sitting there like what is going on she did such a good job though and it was all really good information it was late at night we were at your house in the basement weren't we when we were yeah yeah i remember i had notes because i'm like i can't miss these things yeah it all was of these great. women she, need to know how to orgasm you all <laughs> of the all of the things so go listen to that if you want to have a fun valentine's day night yes, please do <laughs> please do i'm very passionate about that i feel like yeah, every she is. especially because like a christian i feel like i mm-hmm. run a- across so many women that don't I don't know if they have like the conviction that sex is good. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Well, we also talked about purity culture. We did. I was we did a actually, whole episode we of that. shared more about we that. We should this have. Week. Yeah. Um, because I almost think that like there's so much unlearning we have to do in order to have like yeah. fulfilling sex lives and which is sad. Because and even just like operate as a woman in your day to day life I know. without feeling shame. I know. You know, I'm like, 
why do I have shame that I have cleavage as like a 28 year old mom of two? Yeah. Your boobs are feeding a baby right now. They're supposed to be big. Yeah. Like I just have always felt inappropriate every time that I have boobs, but you got to have boobs to feed a baby. So (laughs) (laughs) yes. Um, what are we talking about today? Marriage. What about it? (laughs) I don't know. We could just talk. I mean, like we could just talk about what has been, what has worked, what has not worked. Yeah. Well, Things like typical, we could talk even about like typical um, issues that marriages face and like mm-hmm. maybe how to tackle some of those things or like Amanda and I aren't going to like dive into like a ton of personal stuff, but like we're just going to talk about, yeah, right. I think we both have really solid marriages Yeah. Um, and I have said this a lot on our podcast, but I did not come into my marriage with like any communication skills or any like relationship skills. My mm-hmm. husband brought all of that to the table and taught me all of it yeah. with like patience and grace. Um, so I've learned a lot about not only like relationship with my husband, but just like relationships in mm-hmm. general. So um, I don't know. I think it's fun to talk about because yeah. I, I think there's a lot of stuff that like if you know it, you just assume mm-hmm. people know it, mm-hmm. but then you get into a relationship and some your significant other doesn't know how to communicate or whatever Mm -hmm. and you're just like it like blows your mind Mm -hmm. because they weren't given that example and I honestly like I was thinking about this on the drive over here I wanted to just give a shout out to there's a program called re-engage and it's offered at like most churches I believe and it's a small group it's like a big group that breaks up into small groups and you walk through with the same people for 14 weeks and you tackle all of these like biblical principles for marriage like forgiveness and grace and Mm -hmm. you really dive in to all of the things that you might not have ever like really sat and talked about um and there's couples of all ages like there's couples who do it before they get married or like right when they get married or there's couples who've been married for 20 30 40 years that are going through it and um I just think it's like a really special program so if you're just like I want you could be like, I have an awful marriage and I don't know what to do. Like I'm about to walk out. Or you could be like, we actually have a pretty decent marriage, but I think it could get better. This program is just amazing. Mm. Like my parents are um, leaders of re too. So like they, I just feel like I get to see behind the scenes a lot. And Chase and I did it last year, I think two years ago, That's so three fun. years ago. And it was just like, how often do you have dedicated set aside time where you're like working through a workbook Mm -hmm. about how to like know and love each other better, you know? And like it brought up stuff as we were going through it that we both had even forgotten about. We're like, Oh my gosh, we like never even talked about this or we could, you know, do this. It's just, it just opened so many doors for communication. So before I like forget about telling you guys about that, yeah, it's like a quick Google search and I'm sure your church that you go to currently might even offer it, Mm -hmm. but yeah, most churches, I think, have, like, mm-hmm. programs for marriage. I know for sure Crossroads in Parker and Mission Hills in Littleton, but I could look into other ones if you're interested, just hmm. if you're local. I, I don't know I if you're that. not local, but anywho. <laughs> Sorry, I was mid-yawn, and then I lost my yawn, so it's going to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so tired. Um, okay, so right now, bo- Jesse and I are both postpartum, and I got attacked on our page <laughs> uh few weeks ago now maybe it was like two weeks ago because i still get comments like every day and they're all from men which is so weird it is so weird i can't get past that that's but anyways in the reel i was talking about like postpartum your the foundation of your relationship cracks i don't want to be misunderstood when i say that because Mm -hmm. like brady and i have a great relationship Mm -hmm. but here's a new stressor yeah in our life right here's a brand new stressor going on and i think anytime you get a new stressor you get a new house you have a job change, there's financial stress, there's a new baby brought in, there is a massive shift in your relationship, which was what I was trying to say. Um, but apparently all of the men of Instagram thought I said, I don't like sex and that, you know, I must be an awful <laughs> wife. Um, that's not what I was saying. Gotta love people who I only know. watch our reels, right? I know. So, and they don't even, yeah, it's, they're men. They're not meant for our page. No. Get out of here. Can we filter that somehow? Can we only get to women? Maybe people are like, maybe they were getting triggered because they're like, oh, like my wife sees this kind of stuff and yeah. it, she uses it as an excuse to like. But Jesse and I are both in postpartum. Both of us are either buying a house or have just bought a house. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know our, both of our both husbands, of our husbands are, are entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs. <laughs> so there's their own business. constant like 
not that there's financial stress, but there's constant financial talk. There's mm-hmm. constant like work, you know, changing mm-hmm. seasons. Like there's a lot of stress in our lives. Yeah. <laughs> right. Now. Yeah. So like, I think we can definitely speak from that perspective because I think when, after we had Noah, obviously one kid's still going to rock your world because you have to get used to being parents. Right. But at least for me, I felt like Brady and I were still doing everything together. We were putting Noah to bed together. We yeah. were giving him baths together. We were going on dates together. Mm-hmm. Like Noah was just our little buddy along for the yeah. ride. But now with Lily, it's like, we are as I was just messaging a friend and she's like sometimes I tell my husband I feel like we're two ships passing in the night Mm -hmm. and it's so true because Mm -hmm. it's like okay I need you to put Noah to bed Mm -hmm. while I sit in here with Lily I need your help and by the time we get together at the end of the day he's just been sitting in a room with a star machine on the ceiling singing lullabies Mm -hmm. and I've been laying in bed with a breastfeeding baby with all that oxytocin we're exhausted so we're not like and like not to mention I just feel like that's not even including the kids that might have like super high sleep needs. Yeah. So bedtime might not even be a short period of time. Bedtime could last hours in some households. And I just think, yeah, there was actually something so interesting. We were, um, I said this on our podcast the other day, but we met with this like older married couple a couple nights ago and they pointed out something so interesting to Chase and I, they were like, you guys have been married for almost five years and in five years, There's like a document that you can pull up on Google and it says, you kind of just alluded to it. Um, I think it's like the top 10 or 12 major life stressors Mm -hmm. that can impact your relationships, can change the trajectory of your life, can impact your mental health. Like they're considered the 12 most stressful things a human being can walk through. And he was counting and he goes, you guys have experienced loss because you've had miscarriage, Mm -hmm. right? You've experienced buying a new house twice. You've experienced uh, losing jobs, quitting jobs, starting jobs. Um, You've experienced, like, he he went through all this stuff. And he was like, and that's just in the first five years of your marriage. Like, he's like, you guys are doing great, (laughs) you know? And I think it's just sometimes you need to, like, look back and see the things that you've been through together and the things you've overcome together. And then you look at, like, we were just eating dinner together before I came over here and Chase was just looking at Ledger and he was like we created him like Mm -hmm. he's half you he's half me you know and and it just like we just sat there and like admired our child over the fact that like we created this with love and I don't know I think as long as you can have those like little touch points throughout your day and throughout your week and just spend time reminiscing on how far you've come Mm -hmm. and spend time reminiscing also on how early you are in the grand scheme of life yes. but like how much you yes. have to do together still and anytime like I think one of the sweetest times of our marriage was during COVID when I was pregnant with Sunny because neither of us had jobs mm-hmm. and we weren't really allowed to leave our house and we would just play games all day and we yeah. would like make turkey sandwiches for lunch like every day and maybe we'd take the dogs on a walk and there was so much intentional time together you're forced to slow down we yeah. had Noah during that time yeah. and it was stressful because the government literally shut our business down which was scary oh, yeah, that yeah, someone yeah. has the power to just say no you can't make money right now <laughs> but also it was nice to like have Brady home and I don't know I'll just be a little family we kind of yeah. found our feet as a family during that time yeah it just kind of gives me like that perspective of when you know your kids just now even before I left I felt bad because I was getting so frustrated because Sunny kept Chase and I were just trying to talk about our days and he wanted to um, like debrief some of the exciting things going on in his life. And Sunny, like every 30 seconds was like, guys, this and this and this and this and that. Or like, watch me do this or I need to do this. And I was like, we literally can't talk. It feels like when she's around because I know. she like wants t- to be involved. She mm-hmm. doesn't understand why she's not part of the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Noah will literally say, guys, can you stop talking yeah. so I can say something? Yeah, that's exactly what Sunny says. She's like, I have a question. <laughs> um, Stop talking to each other. And I'm like, (laughs) okay. She's like, excuse me. I just like kind of left frustrated. Like, oh, why can't we just talk to each other? Because I know like when we get home that Sunny's going to need Chase to help put her down and Ledger's going to need me. And then I'm going to try to roll away and he's probably going to wake up in Mm -hmm. 45 minutes. And then she's going to like wake up. You know, it's just all this stuff that I'm like, wow. Sometimes we just need to like take a breath and be like, these are probably the most like... I don't even know what the word is. Um, Complicated, maybe complicated times of our life. Like I truly think it only gets more simple. Yeah. From here on out. 
you know yeah, having little kids is so magical but yeah. yeah it definitely comes with its challenges especially mm-hmm. with your husband so let's talk about some ways that each of us um are trying to connect at this time because like i said houses entrepreneurship babies not just one baby two babies each of us mm-hmm. um and like how we're kind of doing because i think that unless you're talking to friends about that you don't really know how everybody's doing right and you might yeah. fall into the trap of like oh my marriage is awful mm-hmm. or this isn't normal we should be i don't know still in the romance uh like honeymoon phase mm-hmm. <laughs> you know yeah and i think that's also important to talk about is like just because you're not jumping each other's bones like you were when you first got married doesn't mean that feeling's never going to come back. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that what you're going through right now isn't just as beautiful Mm -hmm. and just as special. Like Mm -hmm. these are the times where you are building bone deep, soul deep connections with your husband that make you family and bond you for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Those early days, not really. Those early days are so fun, Yeah, but it's, the trials that you walk mm-hmm. through. And I don't want to call motherhood or parenthood a trial. I would just say it's it's heavier than when you first were it married. It just breaks you wide open and exposes mm-hmm. every part of you. Like I think being a mom, being a wife, both in the same breath, like they break you open and they expose parts of you that I feel like have to, I don't want to say the word die because that's so like aggressive, but there's parts of you that you have to leave behind to mm-hmm. become a mother and a wife. Mm-hmm. You spend the majority of your life just being single, not having to consider anybody but yourself. And then all of a sudden you're in, you know, fast forward 10 years and you're in this dynamic where there are three for each of us, three other people that are a part of our family unit that we need to consider on the daily basis. If not like it's like moment to moment basis. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is always going to come with its own set of like, whoa there's a resistance in some degree because you're like I'm giving up my whole what feels like my whole past like self because you are because you have to become a different person (laughs) to be you know to fill those these roles but then once you surrender that and you step into those roles full like wholeheartedly and you recognize the shift that has happened you kind of just like settle in and become way more content Mm -hmm. like when you don't fight it anymore and I don't know if everybody goes through that but I just remember at one point being like whoa, I was just like traveling as a college basketball player and I didn't have to do anything other than just take care of myself. And now I'm like married, pregnant, pregnant, you know, and it's just like, whoa, it happens fast, Yeah, you know? Yeah. But yeah, I mean, we all like, I don't know. We all know the divorce rate. Like it's like, it's 50% or higher. I think it's higher. So I think you have a 65% chance of getting divorced now. So if you're struggling in your marriage, you're not alone. And I honestly like wish that there was the curtains pulled back a little bit more on a lot of different people because I just like there's been a couple different really famous people on Instagram, um, like Christian authors or um, people that you like spend time kind of looking up to or idolizing. And then all of a sudden one day they're like getting a divorce Mm -hmm. and you're like, what? I would have never guessed that, you know? And so just hold the comparison game Mm -hmm. loosely because I think that that is probably one of the biggest like detriments to marriage is comparing and pretending that you know what must be going on behind closed doors for every, you know, couple or relationship. And that's just it's a dangerous path to walk when you start thinking or comparing or assuming things Mm -hmm. that you don't know. Um, But yeah, I don't remember where I was going with that. Grace. grace. Give us grace. <laughs> yeah. Here we are. <laughs> um, I think one of the things that saves Brady and I anytime a new trial is brought up in our lives, which is often, you know, as the people that we are and the things we have going on, um, is that we have like a super solid friendship. So regardless of if like romance is involved, Brady and I are best friends. Yeah. Like we know each other so deeply and He's truly the person I want to spend all of my time with. And I think that um, has been fostered by like a lot of vulnerable conversations, a lot of open communication, a lot of like, actually I messed up. Let me step back. Let me re-say what I was trying to say type of things. Mm -hmm. Um, So right now at the end of the day, while we're both touched out, stressed out, we get together at the end of the night, we can still have fun as friends, Mm -hmm. even if, you know, I don't know, we're not jumping each other's bones anymore. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And I feel like that saves us. And then it's it's a constant ebb and flow. It's a constant ebb and flow of that 
that romantic feeling and the friendship feeling. And as long as you have that friendship to fall back on, I feel like you're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We started like eating dinner every night. Well, we've always eaten dinner as a family every night, but we started doing it by candlelight um, per Sunny's request actually. (laughs) And now it's kind of fun. Like I will come home from my workout and, um, Chase will have either like started dinner or made dinner or we'll tag team dinner and we'll like sit down and light candles and it's just really nice. And Ledger usually is napping during dinner and Sunny's usually like sitting with us and then doing her own thing, being crazy and then coming in. I don't know. I think just like regular little rhythms of things um, that you can count on. And even though we don't feel like we can get in a word in edgewise <laughs> with Sunny, like we still are together and like doing yeah. that together. Um And I think being intentional with your time, like that's an intentional thing. Mm -hmm. We're going to sit down as a family every night and eat dinner Mm -hmm. by candlelight. Mm -hmm. That's intentional. Brady and I have a Google calendar that unfortunately we live by. I hate it. (laughs) That's the only way his brain can operate. We have the same. (laughs) So like the beginning of every week or usually we do it on Sunday nights. um, We sit down and we go through the 5,000 colors on that dang calendar, Mm -hmm. which stresses me out. But we can plan the little moments because our days get away from us so fast. You know, Brady's up at five. He's working. I get up at six. I go to the gym. Brady gets up with the kids. He goes to the gym. He goes straight to work. I don't see him again till like eight o'clock sometimes. Mm -hmm. So like if we weren't being intentional with our time, we, our marriage would be, Mm -hmm. I would assume in shambles. Mm -hmm. So we look at our day to day, hour to hour, and we literally say, okay, at, 8.30, 8.30, the kids are in bed from 8.30 to 9.30, we're going to do X, Y, Z. Or on Saturday morning, like tomorrow morning, I know before we do our girls night, mm-hmm. it's our time to get some stuff done in the garage together. And it's like a whole family thing. We're all going to go out and organize the garage because, you know, new house, things got put out there. It's a mess. Mm-hmm. And now his truck doesn't fit. <laughs> um, and Or like, I don't know. I just think that you have to be very deliberate when you're scheduling things out to make Mm -hmm. sure that your spouse doesn't fall to the wayside as like a second thought. Um, yeah. Making sure that you're getting time together. That is a really big one. And then I just think working on communication skills, if you can find a book, if you can find a therapist, if you can find like, I don't know, some internet guru to help you guys like practice communication Because I feel like that is where most frustration comes from in marriage. I come from um, a hint dropping family Mm -hmm. where um, my mom, here's a perfect example. And she's so funny. I love her. So she's not going to listen to this. But if she is, I'm meaning this in the most lovingly way. She'll call me around Christmas time and she's like, oh, I showed dad a picture a few weeks ago of the gift I want for Christmas. I was like, oh, do you tell him you want it as a gift? He goes, no, I just I just showed him it. And I'm like, okay, does he know you want him to buy it? Well, if he loves me, he'll, he'll know to buy it. <laughs> okay. So then my aunt Paula and I have to get on the phone together, find the thing that my mom, you know what I mean? Like we have to help my dad out because yeah. he's fallen into so many traps this way. Cause that's not how my dad communicates. Yeah. My dad is a very literal man. Mm-hmm. So they miss each other all the time. And they had a really tumultuous time when I was growing up and they've settled into it now because I think my mom is becoming a little bit more self-aware and my dad is also a little bit more aware of her communication mm-hmm. style. But when Brady and I got married, there was a lot of times where Brady was like, okay, but what did you mean by that? I'm like, I said the trash stunk. What do you mean? What I, I, need, I need you to take it out, <laughs> you know? And he's like, but you didn't say that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like there's a lot of like teaching me, like I actually need to communicate my needs. And it's an uncomfortable thing if you're unfamiliar with it. Yeah. It really is. It feels like, I don't know. I feel like we get it in our heads, especially if you're raised that way, that like, oh, if they love me, they're just going to know this about me. Yes. Oh, if they love me, they're just going to know what I mean. They should know. No. <laughs> All frustrations come from unmet expectations. That yes. is my husband's like favorite thing to say. It's true. So you have to set your expectations for your relationship for with anybody Um And if you set them well enough, you won't feel disappointed, right? Mm -hmm. So if my birthday's coming up and I want to do something specific, I'm not just going to say, hey, Brady, this is, I kind of feel like maybe I want to do this. I'm like, no, this is what I want to do for my birthday. Yeah. Or like in any situation. I like, I am so against all of those games that I feel like women typically play that just make their lives so much harder. I don't even know if they're aware they're playing it though. 
and maybe you're not but like if you are here you're about to find out <laughs> and i feel like men are <laughs> just think, as guilty sometimes too it's not just oh women. totally but i just feel like a lot of times maybe i'm stereotyping but like i feel like women in particular are a lot of times the ones that are just expecting men to read their minds mm-hmm. um but men often don't know how to do that and like they're very much just like in the moment and like yeah. you said a lot of times i feel like they tend to be very literal that waiting around for them to assume for you waiting around for them to read your mind or assume that they know what you're thinking about is exhausting and frustrating and maddening just don't do it like Mm -mm. we were even just talking because i love valentine's day so much i was like so did you already make reservations or should i make reservations and also like i've been really wanting to do this and like i think i'm gonna do this and um and just like saying it out loud because i think that a lot of times we just think that voicing I think that we're made to believe that voicing our needs is wrong. I do. I think Um, women in particular, if you're going to stereotype, I think that's the stereotype is we are taught at a young age that saying what we want Mm -hmm. is inappropriate. Yeah. And being like, I need physical touch or I need um, to go on a date with you because I'm not feeling connected or, or I'm whatever it is. I feel like we're just made to believe that we just need to stop talking Mm -hmm. and get over it. Yeah. 100%. Um, And I just feel like there is so much resentment that builds when we don't speak how we're feeling and what we need. And I think there's so much connection to be found in just being able to be straight up with Mm -hmm. your spouse. But when you were talking about the um, hint dropping, it made me think about the negative communication patterns. Um, That's something that I learned about in reengage and just like when I studied psychology in college, but um, there's, patterns that we can like fall into maybe we were raised this way and it's all we knew or it's just a dance that you've learned in your marriage somehow and it is toxic because it always ends in the other person feeling um not heard or not validated or not important and um it's not it's it's just not healthy in the way that you're going to come to a consensus a consensus about whatever issue you're talking about so here are some of them stonewalling um, which is like you just shut down completely and you don't talk or you maybe you avoid eye contact. You're like, I'm, you don't mean anything to me. I'm done with this. Mm-hmm. Um, criticism. So instead of like voicing your needs, you're just like, well, why can't you just like know what I need? Why, why do you care so much about work? Why do you care? So like, instead of just being like, I miss you. Yeah. It's more vulnerable that way. Yeah. Right. And it's what you really mean. Um, anyways. <laughs> or defensiveness. Like your partner brings something up to you and you're like, well, I'm only, I only do that because, you know, like you're, you're yeah, you know, mm-hmm. um, passive aggression, super frustrating. <laughs> like that's probably one of my most frustrating things that I run into just in general with people. I'm like, please just tell me what you mean. Like I cannot sit around and try to interpret what you're saying guess. all the time. Yeah. It is exhausting. Name calling goes without saying sarcasm can also be really frustrating. <laughs> um, invalidation. So like your partner says something to you and you're just like, I mean, it could be worse, you know, or like, at least I, I did the dishes today. Like, did you see that I did, you know, um, and the negative interpretation, which is like every single thing you are seeing through the lens of the worst case scenario. Mm-hmm. Right. So or like your husband you. walks out to take the trash out to the curb and you don't know that. So you're like, oh, of course he's like going to, you know do something for himself or like I'm not going to see him for an, I don't know whatever I don't know what the negative interpretation of that would be but like you just assume the worst mm-hmm. instead of being like wow he's going to take the trash out I'm so grateful I totally forgot about that it's like oh of course he's like you know off doing his own thing or whatever and then withdraw which is also pretty self-explanatory but if you like find yourself falling into any of those or your partner falling into any of those it's so helpful to just name it for what it is and find solutions yeah um, and maybe even get to the root, like where you raise this way. Is it like a family of origin thing where you taught this somewhere along the way and be humble enough to ask the question of like, what am I doing? That's making you feel like your only option is to withdraw mm-hmm. or your only option is to defend yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, like, do you, what do you need in order for that to feel like a safer place yeah. for you? And I feel like the art, there is an art to arguing with anybody, yeah. right? Because these you're two separate people. Mm-hmm. You're not going to agree on everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and being able to express frustrations without it escalating. Yeah. I can honestly say I, I am racking my brain and I cannot think of a time where Brady and I have raised voices at each other 
um, we come at each other and this is all taught to me by my husband. So I'm not taking credit for it, but we come to each other like, I am feeling this way. I am feeling like I'm, I don't know, make it up, whatever. Uh, I am feeling like I'm missing you because you're working so much. Mm -hmm. I think we've had this conversation. Like I am feeling that way. I am needing connection from you. Mm -hmm. Can we plan two hours this weekend Mm -hmm. where it's just me and you Mm -hmm. because I miss you? And in the past, I probably would have said like, why are you working so much? You must not care about me. Like our relationship must be taking a backseat to the office. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like those are two totally different things Mm -hmm. that I'm, but I'm saying the exact same thing. I miss you and I need connection. And one is going to draw defensiveness and one is going to draw connection, which is what you're looking for. And if someone offends you, like you just, you ask them like, what did you mean by that? Can you reframe that? Because I feel this is how I'm, I'm taking it. And there are times, there are lots of times where Brady's like, okay, but you took it that way. I didn't intend it that way. Mm-hmm. And so let's figure out what I was trying to say in a way that's not going to hurt you. I almost think that that's like probably one of the biggest arguments people have is the discrepancy bes- between someone's intention and then someone's interpretation. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes we get so caught on like, well, I didn't intend for that. So you need to like get over how yeah. you interpreted that. But at the end of the day, your intention is not always going to come across perfectly Mm -mm. to another person and addressing how it might've come across is more important than sticking to your guns of like what you intended, you know, because everybody's perception is their reality. So everybody's living in their own reality based on what they're perceiving. So we need to validate perception over intention because that's the connection to the other human being over Mm -hmm. just trying to be right and validate ourselves. Yeah. And always try to re say what, you were intending yes. in a di- maybe in a different way to get right. your point across. But like, in a, if something like offends you too, like if you guys are talking or maybe your husband's like on his phone and you're, it's upsetting you like ask, can we talk about this right now? Cause it's bothering me. Don't just let it fester. Don't start mm-hmm. like doing the thing in your head where you're building it bigger and bigger. And then you start doing all those yeah. things you were talking mm-hmm. about. Like this is bothering me. Can we talk about it real quick? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm seeing a problem here. This yeah. is how I'm feeling. Again, I'm not mm-hmm. going to be blaming him. I'm not going to be, assuming his intentions or labeling him anyway and mm-hmm. saying he's neglectful or whatever mm-hmm. I'm feeling, you know, label mm-hmm. it yeah. how you're feeling and then come up with like a solution together. It's really a solution building. So your arguments speak, go from having fights to like literally coming up with solutions and your children mm-hmm. see you work through that. It's really great. And I'll say with the communication thing, something that I'm like super intentional with Noah as he's getting old, getting older and he starts, he's, I want him to be a little bit more independent. So Mm -hmm. he'll say like, who, what did I'm trying to think of an example. Um, I don't know, mom, I'm thirsty. Okay. What do you need me to do? Can you please give me some water? Mm -hmm. Yes, I can get you some water. Just like little things like that. Don't tell me you're thirsty. Tell me you want some juice. You Mm -hmm. want some water. You want some tea. What is it that you want from me? So like, and you have to be that way in your marriage. Just be so freaking literal (laughs) and your needs cannot be miscommunicated. Right. I know. I feel like there's just an aspect of vulnerability that maybe we have to tap into that is, I think, more natural for some people than it is for other people. Um, But the other thing I was thinking about that's like so, I feel like, crucial when it comes to marriage is identifying our family of origin. I think our family of origin has almost everything to do with how we operate and function within a marriage because it's what we were given as a guidebook on how marriage is supposed to look. And I think there's so much understanding to be had when you step back and you're like, well, why, why does, why does he respond to situations this way? Or why do I respond to situations this way? And you can like dive back in to how maybe your parents did that or didn't do that. I remember right before Chase and I got married, we wrote down um, attributes from our parents that, we wanted to carry into our marriage and things we didn't want to carry into our marriage. And we both had our own separate lists and we came together and we talked about it all. Um, But I think like what is so interesting that Chase and I have talked about is um, my, I never once saw my parents fight our entire lives. Never once raised their voice, never once got mad at each other. Like it was, it was nothing. And I think as a child that was very, validating like we always felt safe and secure Mm -hmm. but then we get into marriage and we grow up and we're like there's no conflict what is that what does that (laughs) look like we have no you know and then chase comes from the other side of things where 
he said like more nights than not he's falling asleep and he's just hearing his parents screaming mm-hmm. at each other you know and like you know slamming doors or leaving like walking out the door mm-hmm. um and that has really affected him as an adult and um he i can tell like it's so nervous when there's any kind of tension because he doesn't want to re- re- replicate what mm-hmm. that what that felt like for him as a child and so um i just think that that is like it's really important to identify and empathize with your spouse's childhood and mm-hmm. try to kind of come to a better understanding of them from the perspective of a child. Like look at your daughter or your son right now and look at them, look, try to see your spouse at the same age and like try to catch maybe what they didn't get that they needed mm-hmm. as a kid I or that. maybe that they, um, you know, were they bullied at school? Were they, um, name called were they neglected to some degree were they abused to some degree and and try to like empathize with that version of them and I think that it kind of transforms how you view them as an adult because yeah. we're all just like big kids trying yeah. to figure it all out you know like well, we're all children of God and that yeah. you you saying that like triggered that like sometimes and this is like going even with road rage like the stranger mm-hmm. in the street that's ticking you off like you have to look at them the way God looks at them mm-hmm. Why does God love this person? Mm -hmm. Who are they actually? Because this trait that is like bothering you is not who they are. Mm -hmm. It's a reaction to something. It's a symptom of something else. Um, So see them through the eyes of God Mm -hmm. if you need to, to like bring yourself back down, bring the cortisol levels down. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And like, and I think what, you know, the point of me saying like how, like the family of origin stuff is like, I think there needs to be a balance. Like, I don't think your kids should be listening to you argue. And I don't Mm -hmm. think you should be walking out and leaving these things like Mm -hmm. unresolved. I don't think that they should be in the midst of like being brought into arguments by any means or used as pawns in arguments. Like that's like the far side of toxicity. Right. But it's okay to let them see conflict resolution. Yes, Like they can't never see anything either Mm -hmm. because then they're going to someday just be so nervous and uncomfortable with any kind of tension or conflict. So being able to like respectfully disagree with each other and have conversations or arguments that are respectful and, um, you know, let them see that there's a resolve there, Mm -hmm. I think is really important. There's still that safety and security aspect, but it's like, okay, but I also have a, I have a guidebook on how this looks. Yes. I I 100% agree. There was one time, just a funny story in our old house. I was super pregnant. And if you don't know me, I'm usually a very nice human when I'm pregnant that all goes out the window. I, th- I remember Brady and I got into a disagreement. And again, voices weren't raised, but we were going back and forth trying to resolve this conflict. And Noah was sitting there and all of a sudden, Noah has the most animated face. Mm-hmm. His facial expressions are hilarious. And he's like, guys, guys, guys. And then finally we stopped from like, yes, Noah. He's like, I think we need to do two things. Take some deep breaths and give a hug. And he's like pointing between the both of us now. And we did. Like okay, that's, that's so a great, cute. that's great advice. Yeah, it's like one of my most favorite memories because he's guys, Aww. guys. <laughs> it's so cute. I know, like, yeah, let them, you, you know, let them be a part of the, like you're a, you're a family and you're you're figuring it out all together. Like protect them by all means necessary from what they need protecting from. But that kind of stuff, it's like, you know, the fact that he could see that and be like, hey give each other a hug and you guys gave each other a hug. It's like, that's just so sweet. And like, you know, I'm sure that's a good memory of his. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. I will also say, um, I think each phase of your life, you get a new love language. Cause I feel like physical touch used to be my same love language. Same. And Um, it's it's so far out the window. Yeah. Mine is quality time right now. Like I just want you sitting in a room with me without your phone in your face or without work. And I don't want to talk about work. Mm -hmm. I just want to sit down and talk to you. That's literally my love language right now. Like if that is what I need. Five years ago, I was, I wanted all the physical touch all the time, like PDA a hundred, you know what I mean? And now that is not it. But then after I had Noah and it was like 18 months after I had him, Noah was in his own room. Like things were kind of getting back to like, I don't know, a new normal physical touch came back. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a lot of good check-ins. And then Brady's <laughs> Brady's act of service is, or Brady's um, love language is act of service. Not my love language at all. I want to give love by acts of service. I want to cook the meals. Mm-hmm. I want to clean the house. I want to do the laundry. Mm-hmm. That's how I'm showing love to like my family. 
don't do that for me though because I'm not taking mm-hmm. love that way he's like but I did the dishes I don't care I would have done the dishes that's so funny <laughs> okay my mom has such a good theory about love languages and she's like I think your love language shifts based on you know what your partner is really good at so like when you get married whatever your partner is really good at your love language kind of shifts away from those things because you kind of like are getting filled in those ways Mm -hmm. all of the time. And it was funny because when we first, like before we got married, my love language was probably words of affirmation and physical touch. Well, Chase is like very good at both of those things, right? Like he is showering me in praise 24 (laughs) seven and he's like always wanting to be like on top of me. Right. And so if we could be like glued at the hip, like that would be his favorite (laughs) thing. And so, um, I think that like, (laughs) like a golden retriever. Yeah, totally. Oh, totally. He, he describes himself that way actually. That's cute. Um, (laughs) And so I think because I've been so filled up in those ways that like my love languages have totally shifted to like quality time and gifts. I yeah. love gifts. They're so like, which I used to be like, oh, gifts, that's such a superficial love language. But I think it's like the Aww. thought and intention yeah. behind it is it's just so grand yeah. to me and it makes such a big difference to me. And um, and then I've noticed like his love languages have shifted like his used to be acts of service and quality time or no acts of service. And, um, I don't remember the other one actually, but now it's like full fledged words of affirmation and physical touch. Yeah. That's Brady. He's <laughs> words like, of affirmation and physical yeah, touch. It's so funny. Yeah. So yeah. find ways to fulfill that for your partner. I'm like yeah. Brady will thrive off of a midday text mm-hmm. about how great he's doing. Yeah. I mean, that will just sustain him for the rest yeah. of the day. So like, why not? Right. It's not my love language right now, but let's do mm-hmm. it that's great mm-hmm. physical touch can be tricky when you're postpartum mm-hmm. and you have a baby but yes you. totally um but it's don't skimp on it yeah you can have physical touch and it not be a big production 100 mm-hmm. it doesn't always have to end in sex right well, and, and don't you think that like a lot of arguments or like misplaced resentment often comes from the fact that like we're trying to love our spouse through the lens for which we receive love yes and we're not trying to be like wait a second like Mm -hmm. what do they need exactly that's why i'm saying you need to talk Mm -hmm. there need to be checkpoints about how are you receiving love right now Mm -hmm. and how are you giving it Mm -hmm. because while my love language right now like receiving it is not acts of service don't do it um i recognize that that's how he's giving me love right now he's doing the dishes he doesn't want to do the dishes and I can see that that's something for me. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, There's like so many quizzes online you can take if yeah. you're, you're kind of not Just sure. I actually recently asked, I went through and asked Sunny all of the questions for <laughs> a love language test because I was just curious. And like, I tried to do it for myself and I was like, Sunny, would you rather me be like, hey, I got this toy for you from the store because I was thinking about you or we should go to the park right now. And she's like, we should go to the park right now. No, it's so and gifts. you know, gifts, and so she gifts. like went. I went through all these questions, and you can do this with your kid if you want to, because I think sometimes we like spin our wheels of oh, I'm loving them this way. Mm-hmm. I'm loving. I I try to love Sunny so often through acts of service, mm-hmm. but she is <laughs> and she appeases me like she's so sweet. She totally appeases me, and I think she recognizes it. But that is not what's going to make her feel loved. And so even for your kids, take the love language yeah. test or like if they're really little, like Noah and Sunny, like ta- taper it back a little bit so that you can kind of ask more relevant questions yeah. that they understand. Well, and fi- if you go to five lovelanguages.com, like the number five lovelanguages.com, there are so many, like I think there is one for your kid. Mm-hmm. There's one for your work friend. There's mm-hmm. one for your best friend. There's yeah. one for your spouse. There's one for yourself. Like, I think it's just great to know those things and to be able to love people the way that they need to be loved, Mm -hmm. but also be able to recognize the way that people love. That's going to make your marriage so so much more fulfilling. I think if you can see that. Okay. There's also something called, have you heard of the apology languages? Yes. So I also think this is really important because I don't know if you've ever felt this way where like someone apologizes to you and you're like, that didn't make me feel any better, Mm -hmm. you know, but you don't know why. And there's all these different languages for apologies. So some people really just need you to, kind of elaborate on what that must have felt like for the other person. Mm-hmm. It's like, I'm so sorry that I lost my temper on you yesterday. Like that must've made you feel really scared. That must, you know, like kind of elaborate and empathize that mm-hmm. way. Some people want you to be like, what, what could I have done differently in your eyes? Like, can you tell me a little bit more about what that would look mm-hmm. like? Or um, some people want to be like, how can I make this up to you? It's so like a, an apology. And then also like, what can I do going forward to make sure that this doesn't happen again? Or like, what can I do to make this better right now? Yeah. Um, and I can't remember the other one. 
go take that test though. Yeah. Because that's important. Even with your children. Yeah. That's super important. Because like you're not always going to be on the mark with mm-hmm. someone's oh, no. intentions yeah. or love languages. Like there's going to be conflict. But if you can resolve mm-hmm. conflict, you're you're golden. Yeah. I um, spend so much time apologizing to Sunny. And I feel like half the time she doesn't even know what I'm apologizing for. But I'm just like, I'm so sorry. And I, I've noticed her apology language is what can I do to make it better? Mm-hmm. You know, like she she wants to move on to like, OK, let's let's just like fix it and be better, you know, Um so yeah even with your kids like for me i i've just like noticed that and i don't know if you guys have where you're like okay i know you just apologize but like i don't feel any better and it's like maybe they didn't recognize what they did wrong long enough Mm -hmm. or maybe they didn't you know so i think it's interesting and there is just honestly something to owning up to your crap when it comes to like your relationships Mm -hmm. like i am so sorry that that happened you know like i recognize that that was a fault on myself and i'm going to try and do better that is like literally brady and i Mm -hmm. That's what, that's our apology language. It's like, I recognize this mistake. This is the action I'm going to take. I don't want him to ask me what to do and he doesn't want me, you know what I mean? So we want each other to come up with the thing. Well, because apologies, like apologies should come with changed behavior. Yeah. An apology without changed behavior is like prolonged manipulation because you're just feeling like you're kind of going through the motions and you're like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But you're not because your heart isn't changing or your actions aren't changing. Like a true apology is a commitment to try to never do that Mm -hmm. again, which I mean, we're not perfect, but you know what I mean? It's just like, I'm going to try not to do that again. I don't want to repeat my mistakes. Um, but so we talked about love languages. We talked about, being able to argue, being able to uh, apologize. Okay. So let's just talk about the biggest thing in my marriage right now. It's sex. Like when and where and how do I find the energy? And I I don't want to do that right now. Like, cause Brady's love language is so hard on physical touch. Yeah. Um, same with Chase. So <laughs> again, there's like a lot of communication happening in my marriage with that right now. Yeah. Like, okay. So for Christmas I got, um, I don't know why I did this. I got like a bunch of lingerie and put it in his stocking. And then I put it on and I literally cried because <laughs> I'm just like, this body does not look the way I, I want it to. Mm-hmm. And I feel bad saying that because this body has done so much for me. And that feels like traitor is to my body, but yeah. it doesn't look the way I want it to. I'm not feeling confident in my skin right now. Like, Ooh, ick. And I came out and I'm just like, I'm sorry. I can't. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. I just can't. He's like, I don't get it. You know what I mean? Like you're gorgeous. I'm yeah. like, I'm here and I'm seeing you mm-hmm. and you're, it's like, it's not connecting. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. And I feel like, honestly, I thought that this time around would be easier yeah because we've done it before right. and we reconnected and we had like the best mm-hmm. intimate life we've we had after noah like yeah. better than when we first got married right. mm-hmm. do you know what i mean like the the chemistry the connection so then i was like okay well we've rebuilt that before obviously we're going to rebuild it faster and that's not you know what i mean yeah. like two kids huh, it's so much different than one yeah. kid you are more touched out because not only do you have a breastfeeding baby who needs you, but you have another child mm-hmm. who also needs you. So those times, like when you're a mom of one where your baby's napping and you can just like take a mm-hmm. break, you're not getting that break because now all of your energy is being poured into your mm-hmm. other child. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like at the end of the day, I think I'm feeling way more touched out than I did when I had one kid. Yeah. Way more mentally exhausted. Oh, so tired, yeah. Way more physically exhausted and way more like, don't freaking touch me. I, I want to go to sleep. I know. So there's been like a lot of compromise. And like, I feel like the bot, and we talked about this in one of our episodes about our body image postpartum, right? Mm-hmm. Um, But I feel like body image postpartum is like one of the biggest like factors regarding whether or not you want to have sex. I just think you have to feel confident about you yourself, do. which I think is a lot of times why newlyweds have the most sex (laughs) because you're like you have this like body untouched by children and you feel like you've spent you know and a lot of times you're like in the best shape of your life when you get married and um if you don't have a honeymoon baby then that like remains for (laughs) (laughs) longer than like a month but um I don't know I just I maybe maybe I place too much emphasis on how I look 
but how I look has so much to do with how I feel. Yeah, 100%. Um, and then also the hormone part. Mm-hmm. Like, go back, please, and listen to our sex ed episode. But I talk all about how men's testosterone peaks every single day around 8 a.m. is average. Yeah. Every day. They just wake up with all these hormones at 8 a.m. Yeah. And it kind of drains throughout the day slowly, but they never reach, like, a bottom pit, right? Women, it's monthly if you are having a regular cycle, um so uh, you know during the six days you're ovulating is when your hormones are supporting a healthy sex drive yeah not saying you can't have sex that's great outside of those six days but that is when your body's like okay we're ready that is the 8 a.m mm-hmm. of testosterone right but for me at least i don't ovulate or have a cycle while i breastfeed i didn't two full years with noah did not have a period I think I'm getting mine like any day. That's amazing. I really uh, freaking is it? wish. <laughs> it is because then you're going to have those cycles again. Right now, I am just like no estrogen, Amanda, which means estrogen. No estrogen. <laughs> Seriously, estrogen, high estrogen. That's what it gives you. That is our version of testosterone. So, gives, I am no estrogen, Amanda. <laughs> I am no estrogen, Amanda. It gives you the energy. It gives you creativity. It gives you a sex drive. I and see what you're saying. Right? It's so hard. When I'm postpartum and I literally have none of that. So Mm -hmm. now, you know, intimacy for me, it has to be communication first. Like this is how I'm going to check in with you because I know like you think that this is all great and this looks great (laughs) and this feels great. But for me, this is scary. This maybe still hurts a little bit Mm -hmm. because when I have low estrogen and also I think with my past trauma, pelvic floor is tender. Um, and this is not easy for me. Like I want to connect with you and I make sure I say that either this is the time or this isn't the time. Mm -hmm. So having like a really open communication and hopefully your husband is supporting that open communication and understanding Mm -hmm. like he's not being rejected because of X, Y, Z. Like this is literally a you thing. Um, but then also I can't tell you how many times I'm just like, I'm so glad we did that. (laughs) Like, yeah. I needed that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm glad I compromised and just You know what's for funny it. about sex too is like everybody I think always says like, well, why do I have to do this when I don't feel like it? And why would, um, you know, what's the benefit of, you know, doing something when you have to force yourself to do it or whatever. But then I also think about workouts. Yes. Like how often do you really want to go do a workout? 100%. But like every single time you're done with your workout, you're so glad, so glad you I did, did it. Okay. You know, it's just like, it's just, it's just the, the leading up to mm-hmm. it, you know, where you think you hard. have you're in your head and, and I think there's like a physical exertion and there's something that like you feel, yeah, especially for women, you need to get out of your head. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. There's no like having sex without being vulnerable. And, um, yeah. I, and I think that that can yeah. be a little daunting, but, and also like if you're not orgasming every time you have sex, that's a problem. Yeah. Go back and listen to the sex ed episode and let me help you. Because if you know, okay, there's a release at the end of this, there's going to be an increase in oxytocin. There's going to be some like real hormonal niceness happening at the end of this. Like you're going to jump into it. I mean, maybe not jump yeah. into it, but it's going to be easier to get into it. So go back and listen to our sex ed episode. I, please. I like, I had this friend who, um, she voiced mom of me. I think she'd been married for like several years and she was like, I just like don't understand the point of sex. Like she had never, ever had an orgasm. I've I'm had like, people come with these same conversations. straight up not okay. I think that there's also that problem with like the stigma societally and honestly freaking hate the porn industry because the I think that like it. it does. It just like we're we all just going to bow to like <laughs> men and like nothing that we are. We're not supposed to experience anything from this other than just like let them have their way. And I'm so, I'm so grateful that Chase is not like that. But like I, I really I know that there are actively husbands who are like that. Yeah. Who are like this is what it is. Like you know you need to do better. Like your wife should be experiencing yes. pleasure from this. And I before I forget, there's this girl um, that spoke at Mops one time, and her name is Francie Winslow, F R A N C I E W I N S L. O W my <laughs> brain right now she's on instagram and she posts so many things and it's all about like sex marriage and the mission of god i love that's her bio and i think that like we just have a lot of unlearning to do as christian women 
and she gives a lot of really helpful tips of like planning it out and saying like, okay, um, you know, like send flirty texts back and forth with your husband all day while they're at work and like build up that anticipation. Cause I think a lot of times for women, we need to be anticipating that it's like a lot harder for us to just be spontaneous when we're moms and be like, yes, let's do this right now. Like I'm stoked we're in it, but planning it all day and kind of like preparing your body, your mind Mm -hmm. for what is going to happen. And then like before your husband gets home, she talks about like, go into the bathroom and like freshen up. Don't just like stay in your Mm t-shirt and your, you know, your messy bun, like do your hair, put on a little perfume. Like if you want to shave, yeah. Like if you want to shave, then shave. Or if you want to like go get a wax, get a wax or whatever it is, just like prepare your body and your mind so that there aren't all of those roadblocks and excuses that come up like right when that's about to happen but like oh I haven't showered I smell so gross I look so gross like I haven't shaved or whatever is like a roadblock for you um and just like I don't know the way that she puts it just makes it feel a lot more simplified I love that and a lot less complicated in our heads I love that so yes but um and and yeah no and you were just saying that because I'm thinking like don't hear that and say, oh, my husband needs me to shower. Because you know how many times Brady like, no, sends me these yeah, reels yeah. and they're like hilarious. It's like yeah. before we got married and yeah. you're like, oh, and then I'll, afterwards I'm like messy bun on my mm-hmm. head, a baggy t-shirt, look like Adam Sandler. And he's like, and I still want to do yeah. you. <laughs> like they don't care. I know. There's like those, <laughs> those reels are so funny where it's like a mom literally like no bra, yeah. sweat shorts, like twerking, like no. And she's like, I'm going to get laid tonight no matter what I look yeah. like. And it's like. <laughs> There is an aspect of that, right? But like, I almost think that like for women, because we experience those mental roadblocks, it's almost just like for us, like let me come come into this feeling like I have Mm -hmm. myself a little bit more put together. I know. Do you ever like, like earlier Brady and the kids all took a shower and I'm just like, gosh, I wish like, I don't look like that. Do you never like look at your husband? Like you're beautiful. You're like what in you your you don't prime like right that? now because he's just gorgeous <laughs> i know they are in their prime right now and for sure. i don't you know i have two kids their bodies <laughs> and it change <laughs> like know. radically and then that is another way i get into my head i'm like you are hotter than you've ever been our whole marriage and because yeah they they and and they don't change like their yeah. bodies don't change if anything like they just yeah they get like stronger and older and hotter. it's just like that doesn't happen <laughs> Well, through our eyes, maybe through our, their eyes, I they know. like it. Yeah, Chase would be like shushing the crap out of me yeah. if he was here right now because every time he's so good about just like snapping me out of every time I try to say something, he's like, yeah. "Just are you kidding me?" And honestly, this postpartum has been so hard for me because of like the stretch marks and what feels like the more permanent changes that happened to my body. Um, like my foot grew half a size, <laughs> my teeth, like I got all these cavities from this pregnancy, and um. You know, my hair got darker and straighter and the stretch marks, extra skin. Like, I just feel like my body shifted a lot more this pregnancy than it did the last time. And sometimes I get a little nervous about, like, these changes being permanent. (laughs) And, like, what does this mean? And he's just, like, so good about, like, bringing me back to earth and being like, no, I seriously love all of you. And I'm grateful for that because, I don't know, someday I'll believe it. Yeah. But... (sighs) I know. We just got to get out of our heads, honestly. And I think asking for what you need from your husband, like I'll tell Brady, like I need some more like positive affirmation or I'm needing like all day foreplay. So Mm -hmm. like I need you to grab the back of my neck and make out with me in the Mm -hmm. kitchen in the morning Mm -hmm. if you want sex at night because I need to feel like courted almost. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't feel like that, Mm -hmm. you know, but I'm just, it's very important to communicate exactly what you need. And then also allow your husband to communicate exactly what he needs. Like, and don't take that offensively. Don't take it like, Oh, he's just, all he wants is, you know, don't do that to your husband. Like it's okay for him to need Mm -hmm. things and it's okay for him to communicate that to you just the same as Mm -hmm. it is for you to communicate. Mm -hmm. So I'm laughing because if you're watching this on YouTube right now, I want to know how many times you've like counted how many yawns that we've both I know I know I think we're wrapping up right now actually we are we're wrapping up we are (laughs) that actually just just driving around I have 11 notifications from life 360 because he's just driving because the kids are crying um or they're sleeping um or because he wants to pull into the garage I'm not sure is my car in the way yeah 
I didn't tell you that they were gone. So oh, my bad. I saw his truck in the driveway. I know. He took my car. Oh, for it. That's okay. All right. We, <laughs> oh, before we forget to say it, go on to our um, Instagram, link in bio, and download the 20 questions date night. Yeah. Um, let me tell you exactly what it's called. It'll be sent to your email. It might go into your promotions folder, but it is a great at-home date night. There are really intimate questions. Even if you've done them before, redo them because your life is different than it was when we posted them a year ago. Yeah. Um, and, you know, have some really good sex. Happy Valentine's Day. Free 20 questions date night downloadable right there. Yeah. And then also we, our next episode that you're going to hear, we're kind of out of order because we're recording things in a weird order right now. But the next episode that you're going to hear from us will be, after this one, a QA and a mm-hmm. on this episode. So once you've listened to this episode, um, we will be posting a question box before we re-record our next <laughs> episode. And we're going to answer all your questions about yes. this episode. So you can ask us like specifically about what you heard. You can insert your own stories, your own things that you want our insight on. Um, truly anything. Like yeah. We're just going to try to tailor our Q&As to be a bit more... Um, topic focus Mm -hmm. so that we can stay a little bit more on track Um, we'll probably still have some random q and a's here and there but um yeah so just be on the lookout for that if there's anything you want to add to this conversation anything you want to add or anything you like you're wondering about like we want like things that worked really well for you oh my gosh the last thing i'm gonna say oh my goodness is please buy the book the meaning of marriage by timothy keller that's all i'll say send that to me it's a great book yeah it's a great book and um our premarital counselors actually made us read it, but mm. we've, it's been, it's one of those books you always go back to, yeah. you know, throughout your life. So love that. anyways, happy Valentine's day. Yeah. Loves Have fun. Yes. Go listen to our sex ed episode. Download the 20 questions date night. Yes. And we will see you next week. We'll see you next week.